guys. You found me. I'm just going to wait for a few more people to, to join in because I know it's going to take people a minute to find the event. But we are here. We are going to paint magical unicorns and I am ready to show you how. Uh, my name is Danielle Rimbert. I am the owner and operator of Rimbert Illustration in Port Orchard, Washington in Kitsap County. And I am here to teach yet another virtual painting class. I'm going to show you guys some very simple drawing and painting techniques that you guys can use uh, with acrylic paint on canvas, cardboard, paper, your wall, or whatever you have lying around. And I'm super excited about this one because it's very whimsical. It's really fun. You can play with lots of different colors. Uh, I've used some cool colors in this, but if you prefer to have a rainbow unicorn and you want to add some spaceships, ships and aliens or whatever in the sky. I just can't wait to see your interpretations and how we can make this super exciting and individually your own. It's important that uh, we express ourselves, especially, um, you know, in this time where we're confined a lot to our house and we need some outlet some fun stuff to do and so what I have been doing is I've pr been providing these free online classes for people to enjoy during this time from home uh, they're open to all ages all experience levels you don't have to know how to draw or paint because I'm gonna walk you through all the steps I have 20 years of experience that I am ready to impart upon you and so all you need are very basic supplies and you'll be able to walk through and ask me questions as we go through the process and you don't even need a stencil or anything. So um, if you know somebody that would enjoy this event but they're not able to join us today, uh, the link will be saved and you can certainly share the link to them later or you can re-watch uh, the link later on and stop and pause and rewind and fast forward as many times as you want so no worries and Jessica that's cool you can watch it later but I'll try and you know keep up with you guys and go at a pace that's easy going for you uh, these painting events usually last you know about an hour to two hours at the most depending on um, how many people are participating and the content of the painting, but you should only need very basic supplies So I'll talk about that with you guys now and we'll wait for some more people to join us while we're waiting. So um, The first supply that you're gonna need today is just a pencil so we can create a very basic outline on your canvas or paper whatever surface you will be painting on uh, you will need at least one paintbrush i have two today i have a large um, paintbrush for creating texture and blending some large areas and then i have a smaller uh, smaller flat brush or smaller detail brush so um you only need one brush for this though. So if you have one small flat brush, that should do the trick. But if you have multiple, you can feel free to play. I try and limit all of my classes to only needing primary colors. So you just need uh, the colors of yellow, red, blue, and then white and black for mixing. And then if you wanna create any other colors of your own, say you wanna add pink or orange or purple, you would just need those very basic colors uh, to create and mix. And I'll talk to you guys about how to mix your own colors too. Um, so you don't have to follow along with the colors that I'm using. I'm just gonna show you how to create the outline onto the surface, how to create the texture that you want, and we're just gonna have a lot of fun. So if you guys have your supplies ready, let me know, give me thumbs ups and comments and hearts and stuff so I know. Also make sure you have a water bowl so that you can clean your brushes off, some paper towels or a paint rag handy. I like to use an old scrap of towel just to recycle. It usually cleans the brushes better and it's less garbage. Uh, make sure that you're wearing clothes that you're okay with getting dirty because you will get paint on your hands probably or on the surface underneath. So lay down newspaper or a towel or something and make sure that you have lots of elbow room to be able to relax. I'm going to flip the camera around so you guys can see what we're working on while I gather the rest of my supplies, okay? So here is our magical unicorn for the day. And so... 
like I said, we're going to be doing this kind of spacey background and I've used like teals and purples and stuff inside the hair. But if you wanted to change the color of the unicorn or you want to change the color of the hair, you can certainly do any of those things. I'm going to show you how to do a very simple outline of the shape of the unicorn. And then if you guys want to um, change things as we go, please, please do that. It makes it much more fun in the process here. So make sure you have your pencil, your brush, your watercolors, uh, or your acrylics, uh, markers or crayons, if that's all you got. We're gonna walk through the steps of how to uh, paint and create this. And then I also wanna make sure um, that you guys know that your painting does not have to be horizontal. If you want your painting to be vertical, it's fine because you can recreate this um, any way that you want. I will tell you though that the larger the details are for like filling in um, the horse face and all that stuff, the easier it will probably be for you guys to paint it in there. So I just want you to know that ahead of time. All right. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm just going to get the rest of my brushes and then we're going to get started and we're going to talk about how to do that fun outline. And like I said, I will try and go at a pace that's easy for all of you guys. If you feel that I'm going too fast or you misunderstood or you missed a step, feel free to, you know, to stop me and I will try and follow your comments as best as I can. Okay, so I'm going to take this painting away and I'm going to put a new one in its place, okay? You guys ready? All right. So nice blank canvas here, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna start with the shape of the face of the horse, and I'm gonna show you guys an easy way to duplicate a horse face. So if you decided you didn't wanna do a horn or you just wanted to do the horse, then you can do that first, okay? So we're gonna start with the cheek shape of the horse okay so what you want to do is you want to find a spot in the lower half of your canvas and what you can do is you can make a circular motion with your hand to just kind of get ready and I don't want you to do really dark pencil lines you just need fairly light pencil lines but you're gonna draw a circle where you want the cheek of your unicorn to be and you want the bottom to be a little bit darker because obviously this may be shaded later, but we don't need it to be super detailed. So get your pencil out and then use a circular motion with your hand to get ready. And then you're gonna draw a vague circle. And it doesn't have to be an exact circle because we can make adjustments with our paint later. And um, you know that's not really that important right now. This is basically for outline purposes at this moment, okay? So we have our cheek and then Based on this is how we're going to figure out where everything else in the whole face needs to be at. So we want the eyeball of the unicorn to be towards the, the front of the cheek. So here's the top of the cheek here. And then we're going to draw a line just a little bit above that that goes maybe about halfway back to um, identify where the bottom of the eye is. Okay? And then from this line right here, we can do a slightly angled line back. So this is for a sideways eye, okay? And then we can start from the back here and you can draw a curved line coming forward and maybe add a little, a little eyelash. And that's gonna be where the eye is located for your unicorn. And then you can just draw a half circle inside of that. to fill up the whole area where the eye is going to be. So this is the iris, and then you would draw the pupil inside that. So here you would draw, do another smaller circle or a black circle, and that's going to be the pupil of your horse's eye. Okay, so we do our big circular cheek in the lower half of our canvas, and we do a curved line in the, you know just above the front of the cheek, about halfway as long angle it back and we start at the back corner here to create a slightly curved line and an eyelash and you can add more eyelashes later if you really like that and that's how we draw the cheek and the eye 
of our horse, okay? And so just in front of where this eyelash is, we're gonna do a little bump that's gonna look kind of like a C, and this is gonna be the forehead of our unicorn, okay? So this is gonna look kind of like this. It's gonna look kind of like a sideways C, and that's the forehead of your unicorn. And then we can go from this shape to create our first, our first ear, okay? So you would come up from that, almost straight, and then you would curve the top and come back. And so the ear, let's see, we wanna go almost to the top of the canvas and you can make this bigger later. So you want the top of the, or the bottom of the ear to be almost about where the back of the cheek is, okay? So you want this to come up and then you want that to go back. Okay, and then you can draw another triangle inside of that ear, okay? So then we're gonna come back to this part and don't worry about what this looks like yet because it's gonna look weird until the end. So <laughs> don't worry guys, I gotcha. So we're gonna come down to the other side of this C here and we're gonna draw a nice angled line coming down, okay? And we want it to be long enough that it's just a few inches away from the edge of the canvas, okay? So you want it to be in a nice slope and then you want to leave enough slope and enough room so that we can draw another curved line so it's going to look like another C. And that's going to be the nostril, the nostril of your unicorn. Okay, and then you can draw a little backward C inside the nostril just to show that's where the nose is at. Okay, so we did our circular motion, we drew our cheek, we figured out where our eye placement was. So it's kind of like a triangle with a curved top and an eyelash and a big circle and a little circle. And then we went up and away from that and we did our curved line that looks like our angled C. And we came up in a kind of rounded triangle here, came back and see this back of this ear should line up with almost with the back of the cheek. Little triangle on the inside Okay, so that's the sideways profile here, and then we went back to our bump here, and we created an angled long line coming down, okay, with a little curve and a bump for the nostril, and then we did a backward C inside there, and then we want to create the upper lip of our unicorn. So I'm going to do another C shape, but it's going to be slightly bigger, okay? And then I can bring a little line coming back just to create the area for the mouth, okay? So this doesn't have to go all the way back. We just want it to go a little ways back, okay? And then we want to create the bottom lip. So the bottom lip would be another C, a little, a little C, curved. And then we can bring this line back to our cheek, okay? And if it needs to be wider, you can always do that and then, you know, paint over any area that's there, okay? So if it got a little skinny and you need it to be wider, you can always bring those down, but it should be not too much further up from the bottom of the cheek here. So we don't want it to match up because we want this to stick out a little bit, but we do want it to be fairly lower there. And so if your line got a little skinny, it's okay to come back in and adjust that. Okay, and that's the main profile for the horse's face. And like I said, you can adjust the rest of that, but we want from the back of the ear to be a nice arch so it's nice and curved. Okay, and then underneath the cheek here, where this line ended, you can make another curve so that neck is nice and thick. Okay. So we did a nice big curve back here. Okay, and until it has hair, it's gonna look kind of like a dog, and that's okay. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna draw the main area where we want our horn to be. So we want our horn to be between the ears, and we can do it right um, up behind this ear that we drew. So we wanna go up a little bit, and you can create a 
point off to the side and then come back and you can make that as thick or as thin as you want for the horn. I'm going to show you how to do the fancy detail for that. And then you can either make the ear poke out back here in a little triangle or you can bring it forward like I did in the main painting. So depending on where you place your horn, you can definitely, you know, add a little ear wherever you want because we're going to add hair on there that's going to fill in the gaps of stuff, okay? So in the original painting, I made my horn point up a little bit. So here, I'm going to come back to the original just so you guys can see all the details of everything we just drew, okay? So here's the circle. Here's our eye. Okay, I created my little circle in here. Don't worry about that little dot. We'll create that later. Here's my little bump, C. This goes up in a triangle. See, there's another triangle inside there. This arch comes back like this. We have another arch over here. Okay. The nose comes down at a slant. We have a nice bump there. Come down in a bottom lip with another bump. Short line back. Curve. And then come back to the come back to the cheek. Okay, how do we feel so far? Are we feeling confident or are we feeling like we need a minute? How are we doing, guys? How's the feed? Are we able to see the picture clearly enough? Let me know if we need help with this. So you can do the horn one of two ways very simply. You could just do angled lines coming all the way up and that would be easy. But if you want to add some texture to your horn and make it a little bit more fancy, I'll show you another way to do that. So the way that we do that is you start at the bottom edge of your horn and look I'm making like a it's kind of like a curvy S see this that's okay I'll give you a minute so see I start on this side and I curve over and I go to that side and then I start at this point right here and I make the same shape so that it hits there and that it ends there so I start at this point I curve, go over, so that it ends there. Do you guys see what I'm doing? So it starts on one side, ends on the other side. Starts on one side, ends on the other side. But if you want to, you know, just do straight angled lines, that's cool too. This is just a fancier way of, of decorating that horn. Okay? So I'll give you guys a minute to catch up. I'll get myself a beverage. And then if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for painting with me guys today. I was really excited about sharing this one. This is fun. I really enjoy doing fantasy and whimsical art and teaching very basic drawing concepts. The idea behind this, um, this drawing concept that I want to show you guys is we're taking really simple shapes and then we're using them to be our guide to create the face. So our first shape that we based everything off of was a circle. And we're using combinations of circles and triangles. So see, this is a circle. Up the eyebrow is a half circle. You could fit another circle there. I could fit another circle here. You could fit a circle there. The triangle is the eye. Circles inside circles. Triangle for the ears. Triangle, triangle. So in beginning painting and drawing, it's really important that when you're looking at shapes or, or objects, uh, to identify what shapes are inside that object and to be able to build it based on those shapes. And then that'll also help you with proportion and stuff too. So that's how we get the very basic shape of our face. And so once we get the very basic shape of our face, we can then go in and we can start doing block painting um, to kind of fill in the details, okay? So 
in the original painting, my unicorn was white. Your unicorn does not have to be white, but if you want, if you want it to be another color, you can totally do that. I am going to um, stick to what I originally did just to show you guys how I did that, and I'm going to paint my unicorn's face white, okay? And so if you don't cover up all of your pencil lines right away, don't worry about that. And if some of it blends with the white, that's also okay. So if you wanted, for instance, your unicorn to be pink or orange or purple or neon green, it's fantasy land, man. This is, you know, whatever you want it to be. So as long as you can still see like the basic outline of where your mouth is and your nostrils, paint your unicorn head and face whatever color you want it to be. So I'm just using a little flat brush. I'm holding my brush low and I'm just getting a good enough amount of paint that it easily glides over the canvas and I get a nice, nice even layer across. And so if you're not sure if you're getting a good enough layer of paint, what you should get is like when you're running your brush across, it should glide very easily. If it's not gliding very easily, you probably need more paint. And if it is gliding too easily and you have big blobs, uh, <laughs> spread out what you can and make sure that um, you don't have too much paint because we want to create a barrier on the surface, but we do want it to dry so we can add all the other fun stuff to it later, okay? So I'm just going to do a nice white base coat and then I'm going to use other colors to create shadow onto my unicorn pony's face. And this is where I show you guys, see how I did that little oopsie there? I'm going to show you why it doesn't matter that that's there because I can easily cover that up with paint. So the more you run your brush back and forth over the paint while it's fresh on your canvas, the more smooth and blended and even it will become. So if you're having trouble with that, just continue to run your brush over the surface and it'll give it a nice even tone and make sure you hit all the spots, just not inside the eye uh, yet or, um, or on the horn or anything like that. And the cool thing about this too is if you accidentally go out of the lines, it's no big deal because we're going to paint the background next. All right. So I uh, was thinking about it today, about how long I've been doing these classes for, and I've been doing two or three live classes a week since like the middle of March. So that's a really long time. I haven't done any public events since the middle of March, which is so crazy. Um, I have still been doing um, commission work a little bit, and I've been selling paint kits for the classes uh, and you know, people hire me to do windows and murals and, and things like that. But if you are wanting to show some support and keep things going and you can afford to, um, uh, there is a PayPal link where you can leave a little tip or a donation for the painting event. I also have a couple other options. Um, there's an organization in Bremerton called Brem Built that is partnered with the screen printers Fingers Duke and they have printed limited edition t-shirts for all kinds of local Kitsap County businesses. And they are giving $10 of each sale of those shirts to that local business that they're partnering with to help them um, during this time for small businesses. And so if you wanna support small businesses uh, or you wanna support me or any of the other businesses, if you go to Bremerton Built, Brem Built, uh, you can order t-shirts from any of those people and $10 of each of those sales will go towards a local business. I've posted the link on my page for my t-shirt and I will also post it in the event later. Uh, mine has the paintbrush logo that I have with the paintbrush or the fist uh, with paintbrush and paint and it says spread art not germs and Rembrandt illustration and it's in army green. So if you'd like to get one of those shirts you can get one of those. Or uh, you can also become a Patreon of mine. I have been um, offering services through uh, a website called Patreon where you can subscribe to unlimited amounts of paint classes. So if you like doing the free classes, that's awesome. If you want to like paint whatever, whenever you want and have access to unlimited amounts and drawing lessons and coloring pages and all kinds of other perks, then you can... Um, 
subscribe to my Patreon and that's like $20 a month. But there's also other uh, tiers, like you can spend $5 a month or $9 a month, and you get different perks, like you get free art from me, or I send postcards every month, I have free coloring pages, or uh, you get discounts, on, or you're the first to know about, you know, when special events or different things are going on, or if I've got um, murals that I'm painting, or little behind-the-scenes things. You're the first to know about them. So that's kind of cool. So I know it's kind of boring to watch right now because we're just painting it white. But I just get my base coat here. And if you've got a nice bright color, that's wonderful. So the reason why we leave the pencils and we're not too concerned about um, seeing those lines is because we are going to create some shadows on our horsey. And so you can do what I like to do is blue is a complementary color of white. And so you can either mix a really light blue, you know, with blue and a little, you know, just a touch of blue and some white, or if you already have a light blue, and then you can take that and look, you can just outline it wherever your lines are. See, look here. And then the more I run my brush back and forth, the more it kind of blends it out. Or if it doesn't blend it, I can add a little bit of white to my brush. And see how that kind of blends and shadows. And so you would add that light blue, like on the bottom edge of any of your lines or wherever you want the shadow to be. So see, I could add a little blue here, or I would add a little bit of light blue. So all I'm doing, guys, if I, if I do this, see, I'm just taking like a little touch of blue or this, just a tiny bit, you know, with a good amount of white. It doesn't need to be very much darker, just enough to create a shadow. And so see, look, I can add, like if I wanna add a little bit to the cheek, I can just add a little tiny bit there. And if it's too dark, like I said, again, you can add white to your brush and you can blend it out. And if it just goes crazy and it turns your whole cheek blue and you wanna um, tone it down, don't just keep adding paint. What you need to do is you need to let your paint dry, thin it out, clean off your brush, and then when the paint is dry, you can then go in and you can add, you know, and cover it up. But if your paint is still wet and fresh, it's just gonna continue to blend. So you wanna do that while the paint is still fresh. So see, we wanna add the blue anywhere that's underneath or along a pencil line. So see, I could add some blue down here on the neck. So I start at the line and then I can blend in towards the white. Or I can start, see, under here, under the, the chin. And then I start at the line, and then I blend up. And if it's not blending well enough, then just add some white, clean off your brush, and add white to your brush. Okay? So I'm not switching brushes, I'm just using the same brush that I was using. If you're having trouble controlling your brush, like I said, the lower you hold it, the more control you're going to have. And you don't need a ton of paint for this part. So what I like to do is dip your brush in the paint and then kind of wipe your brush off before you put it on the canvas, okay? So see, I got a little bit of, so I got a blue lip. So, and it's going to be, you know, you want more shadow on the bottom edge because that's where, um, you know, there's less light. So see, then I would add, you know, along the pencil line here. You can even add it. You can add it wherever you want, and it's going to be complementary. It's just going to, like, the more shadow you add in, the more it's going to pop. If you're not a fan of having a ton of shadow, then only do it on, you know, like the cheek or the bottom, like the neck and on the bottom here. You don't have to add it everywhere, but you want to do it on the the lower extremities of the paintings to really make it stand out, okay? And if you really wanna make that horsey look like it's smiling in the in the first painting, I made it the, the, the unicorn kind of serious, but if you wanna add a little line right there, you could really make it look like it's smiling. <laughs> okay? So see, I could add a little bit more. I can add blue on this side if I want. But again, just like I said, gradual, start at the line and then slowly work your way in. And if you're having trouble blending it, 
just like I said, clean off your brush and make sure you don't have any, any paint on it except for white. And then look, if you run the white, like, you know, between the white area and the blue and then work your way in, see how it's going to softly blend that and make that disappear. There we go. So we can play, play, play. You can add that blue wherever you want. So if you want to add it on the top of the ear, or on the inner edge. So if you want to crisp up those lines a little bit and get rid of some of the pencil, see? And you'll notice I'm not just going around and outlining the whole thing. I'm working in small areas and then I'm also running my brush over the paint multiple times because you want to work with the paint while it's still fresh and wet and acrylic paint does dry fairly quickly. So you want to make sure that you're just working in little areas that way you're able to control the paint while it's fresh and wet. Okay. And if you if it's running away from it, yeah, and you don't have enough control over it, it's probably because you have too much paint on your brush. And if it's not blending well enough, it's probably because you don't have enough paint. So it's kind of hard to figure out uh, at first. But once you start painting a lot, then you really become, you know, familiar with how much is too much and how much is too little. So see, I can fill in this this ear back there. And you'll also notice that my shadows don't have to be exact. We're just playing, you know, right here. And remember, your job as an artist is to create an illusion. It doesn't have to be precise, especially when we're doing whimsical, whimsical fantasy stuff. So don't worry about it being perfect. I really don't believe there's so much something as, uh, as perfection when it comes to art, because art is really more about... Um, unless you're trying to create a certain technique, but I mean, this is really more about expression and just having a good time and relaxing. And so see, the more I run my brush over it, the more it blends. Okay. But see, we want to have the contrast of where the dark and the light is, uh, where the shadows are. That way everything really stands out. The more it blends. All right. So how are we feeling, guys? You have any questions so far? More. All right. So see, you can even add a little bit of blue underneath here. All right, and then you want the shadow inside the ear. So you can either do the dark blue shadow inside the ear, or you can use just like a tiny bit of gray. It's up to you what color you wanna have in there. So if you would prefer to have pink or blue or gray, you just wanna create kind of a shadow area inside that ear. So that's really up to you what color you wanna use in there, but see. You want to kind of shadow that inner part so you know that that's separate from the rest of the painting, okay? So the back of that inside of the ear is gonna be the darkest point. So I always like to start with the most paint at the darkest point and then work my way out because you know the inside of the ear is gonna have, you know, the darker point and then as it comes towards the light, towards the light, it's gonna have less, okay? And then you can clean off your brush and you can paint the inside of the ear, or the inside of the eye white. We're gonna outline that stuff later, but you can choose whatever color you want your eye to be too. So see, you would paint, you know, the inner corner of the eye white. Okay, and then the outer corner of the eye white. And then you can choose what color you want your eyeball to be. So if you really like the blue, you could do blue. If you want it to be green, you can make the eye green. It's up to you. This is your painting, but see, I just paint this the color I want the eye to be. And 
And if you really want to get detailed uh, with the eyeball, I'm not going to get detailed in this painting, but if you really do, I did a, a painting class on how to do semi-realistic eyeballs, and you can go back and reschool and watch that and then come back and add that into your painting. And if you've already been following the classes and you want to learn, you already know how to do that, then I don't have to tell you. You can just add that into your, add that into your painting. So you would paint your eye the color you want, then you paint the pupil with black. I'm going to tell you guys another secret too. If you're not good at doing really detailed straight lines, if you wait for the paint to dry, you can trace the outline of the eye or the eyeliner with a Sharpie marker. I know, shocking. <laughs> It's not acrylic paint, but it works really well. So if you don't have a steady hand or you're a little nervous and you haven't gotten to that point yet where you're feeling confident, you can go back in with a Sharpie marker. I am confident. So I can, like I said, so I'm holding the brush really low. I have a smaller detail brush. And if you don't have a small detail brush, you can use like the corner edge of one of your flat brushes. But see, you can use a Sharpie marker for that. But see, I'm just going to take my, this is called a round brush. And I dip my paint my brush in the paint and then I roll it off to the side see I roll it so that all the bristles stick together and then I outline that eye okay and so I start from the back and then I come forward that way I'm able to create that little eyelash and if you want to create more than one eyelash you can you can go one two or three as many as you want okay and so like I said the easy way is to use sharpie if you have a round brush you can attempt it um, and then if you want to add a little sparkle to the eye you would take the handle of the paintbrush like this and you would dip it into white paint just the back handle and then see I can just put a little off-center white dot on the eye like that and my eyeball is sparkling okay and then don't forget to add the little shadow in the nostril too so you want to do a little darker blue or a little gray or something where that nostril is at and fill that in also <laughs> and it doesn't have to be too crazy so like I said make sure that you don't have too much paint on your brush because it's much easier to continue to add more paint than it is to take paint away. So just be aware of that. And then if you wanted to, I didn't in the original, but if you wanted to add a little eyelid or something, you can add an eyelid for your horse, okay? And then you're gonna paint the horn whatever color you want the horn to be. So if you want the horn to be yellow if you want it to, every section to be a different color you can paint every section a different color if you have metallic paint you can play with it and paint uh, the horn metallic colors I'm just gonna paint it white just for the sake of you know being consistent with the original painting here or if I had a little gray in it it's okay all right you can do a little light gray or so I see I added a little gray to change it up, make it a little different. But you can definitely make these horns bright colors. Don't worry if, um, like I said, if you get the pencil in there, that's okay. Just you don't have to go all the way to the edge because remember you are going to outline the horn too. So again, the lower you hold your brush, the more control you're going to have of it, over it. You don't want to be all willy-nilly. And waving it around like a wand like Harry Potter I say that a lot at my classes okay you want to have control over the brush and then the longer your brush strokes are so don't be afraid to push firmly and then the longer your brush strokes are the more smooth they're gonna be and then the more you go over the paint while it's wet the smoother that will be also
Am I just racing through this? Am I going too fast? Or are you guys able to keep up with me so far? And again, don't worry if you bounce out of the lines, and I'll show you why in a minute, why that's okay. And we're just painting the magical unicorn horn. So again, you could do two things with this horn. You could just do angled lines going all the way up at a consistent space, or you could do the curve technique that I showed you where you start on one side and on the other. Start on one side and on the other. Ah, oh, I also wanted to let everybody know. So I've decided I have this large accumulation of paintings. And so there's a couple things that are happening. So I'm almost to 3,000 likes on the Facebook page. And when I reach, I have over 3,000 followers. But when I get to 3,000 likes, I am going to give away an original painting. And the person will be able to tell me what they want me to paint. And I will paint that for them for free as a reward. And so how you get entered into that free painting drawing is you go back and find that post and you like it and then you convince your friends to go like my page so we can get to 3,000 and somebody can win. But what I'm also gonna do is I have quite an accumulation of paintings uh, right now and I've decided what I wanna do with them. And so uh, instead of selling them at the retail price that I would normally do, I wanna do a painting raffle and so I think what I'm going to do is once a week for the next month I'm going to list five paintings at a time and I'm going to do so you can buy into the raffle for five dollars and everybody there'll be a limited amount of um, you know spaces for each painting and you just uh, bid on like five dollars or however many um, times you want on the painting that you want and then I'll do a drawing you know at the end of each week and the person that you know the names that are in the the pot will win that painting and I'll mail it to them or deliver it to them uh, at the end at the after the end of the week drawing so we're gonna call it the the five dollar raffle painting so I mean that's pretty good so if you if you want a painting but you don't want to invest like in, or you can't afford to invest in a normal way where you spend 200 300 400 500 dollars or more on an original painting five dollars to possibly win an original painting is a is a pretty good deal and then you know we all win in that scenario because i have these excessive paintings that i want to go to good homes people get art for affordable price and then I'm able to make a little bit of money in the meantime also. So pay attention and watch for the event for the art raffle that I'm going to be doing also every week. And if you guys have um, ideas about what kind of painting you want done for another class, make sure that you guys are also sharing uh, those ideas with me too. I'm doing classes only like a week or so out at a time because of how things are. I'm not sure. So I just want to make sure that um, you know, we're following current events and and uh, able to keep going with that. Okay, so once you have your horn filled in with the very basic color, you can outline it with whatever color you want. And, um, you know, so if you want it to be blue or you want it to be black or you want it to be pink or whatever, you can outline it with whatever. You can also wait until the end to outline your horn. I'm going to wait, okay? So while I'm waiting to outline my horn, I'm gonna ask you guys to do something very uh, dramatic. So you're gonna take black paint and you're gonna paint the rest of your canvas black. <laughs> okay, so your beautiful unicorn is gorgeous and done and now you are going to paint your whole canvas, the rest of it black. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. So I'm not gonna worry about hair or anything like that because we're gonna do that um, as one of the last steps. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to paint everything next to and behind my horse black. So this doesn't need to be super thick, just thick enough 
to coat the canvas, okay? Because we do want this to be dry for the next step. But And then also make sure that you're aware. So when you push against your brush, the bristles are gonna spread a little bit. So make sure that you start a little bit away from your edge and then push firmly against your brush to get those nice crisp edges. And remember, we're gonna be adding hair and stuff over that. So don't worry about that too much if it, you know, if you accidentally bump. But yeah, you wanna start a little bit away and then gradually work your way towards your um, your head. And then we're gonna fill this all in with black paint. So what do you guys think about that art raffle idea? Do you think that sounds kind of fun? Get some art in the mail. I do a nice live drawing every week. You guys hear the birds outside of my deck? They're going nuts today. There's some bird romancing going on outside my on my deck. <laughs> so if you're not painting and you're just tuning in, I feel like this part would be very satisfying to just watch me fill in all the space with solid color. What do you think? For those of you guys that are just tuning in and not painting, is, is that part satisfying? Do we feel like we're learning some stuff today? I have very serious, concentrated uh, painters. Not very many people are, are commenting today. Make sure that you guys are breathing. <laughs> Take deep breaths. Don't hold your breath while you're painting. I have a tendency to do that sometimes when I'm trying to do very calculated details or lines. I hold my breath. We need breath. We need to, you know, breathe through and relax. All right. So outlining, I know using black is very stressful next to those light colors, right? But what's cool about black, too, is you can, if you need to, reshape any details that you want to reshape. So if you're having trouble getting a crisp line or crisp edge, it's either because you don't have enough paint on your brush or you're not pushing with enough force. So see, I don't very lightly touch with my brush and push against the canvas. I want to touch and then push so that my bristles are nice and against the canvas. That way I have control, and if my brush is well loaded, then it's gonna leave a nice crisp, crisp edge. And when you're holding your brush low like this, you can use your pinky for balance. So we've been having people of all different ages paint with us. Um, my daughter is six years old and she regularly paints and draws with me. You don't have to have painting experience to be able to, to do these things, guys. So if you know somebody that's always wanted to learn how to paint or you have always wanted to learn how to paint, you definitely can do it. It's like the comic that I just posted the other day. If you want to learn how to do something, the only way to learn how to do it is to just start and to try. And then you get better with practice. And so, you know, some people go, how do you do that? How do you do what you do? Or you make it look so easy. Guys, I've been painting for a really, really long time, like decades and decades. And so I went through a lot of failed drawings and brush strokes and practices to get to a point where I was happy with what I was creating. So you know, it's just like with cooking, with building, with um, sewing, with any anything. You just have to keep practicing and keep going. And the more that you, um, the more that you practice, better you get. So see, I'm just filling in all the details all around the whole face. Okay. And so again, the more you run your brush back and forth, 
over the surface, the smoother your lines are going to be. And so even though this is black, you do want to pay attention to the direction of your brush strokes. And so if you did an angled line like this, you still want to maybe blend it up and down just to make sure all the brush strokes are even and consistent, okay? So if you have little white patches coming through on your canvas, that means that you need to add, it's absorbing into the surface and you need to add a little bit more paint to your brush or maybe push a little bit harder so that you're actually pushing that paint into the surface. And, um, you know, this is going to create a nice little barrier on the canvas and then all the other paint that we add on here is just going to lay nice and neatly on top, okay? So acrylic is liquid plastic and so it's going to create a nice smooth finish for everything else to lay on top of and when it dries it will shrink a little bit too and it may even um, become a little bit darker of a shade. So if you're ever highlighting or wondering why you're painting looks a certain way, it may be because the, uh, the paint shrunk or it dried a little bit darker than you may have initially planned. So, you know, I always like to do my highlights a little bit brighter and lighter just in case for when the paint dries. There we go. We're getting there, I'm almost done. How many of you guys are getting close to having your background painted? I'm a little bit faster at painting than a lot of people, so I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page and that you're able to follow along easily. And don't feel like you have to rush. If you feel like you have to rush, that means stop and take a minute to relax and slow down because we want those to be controlled brush strokes. You want to make sure that um, you're getting the quality that you want. Don't rush through things, especially with outlining. No problem. So when you do get to a point where you are finished, and I know that some of you guys need some more time, so no worries, but you are just going to, what I would like you to do is clean off your brush and then run a dry brush over the surface of the paint because we want all this black to be even, but we also want it to be dry so we can put the next layer on. So if you take your brush that's clean and dry, you can just run that dry brush over the surface to one, help spread out the paint, help thin it out and push it into the surface, but also to help it dry. And I'm not done yet either, so no worries guys, we're in no rush. So if you guys are new to painting with me, this is your first time painting, welcome. I appreciate you guys for joining me. If you're from an area that is not Kitsap County, Washington, state then you know let me know where you're from if you have kids painting with you today or this is your first time ever I want to know those kind of things that's exciting and it's fun for me it, to see where everybody's from we've been getting people from different parts of the country and different um, different countries we've had a lot of Canadians painting with us which is so cool and you know, I just think it's so fun that we can all come together in this space and create and uh, share with one another. And so I really look forward to seeing everybody's paintings when we're all done, too, because everybody puts their own interpretation. You can see little bits and pieces of every person in each of the uh, creations. And that is just so cool and exciting for me. So all the paintings that I teach in my classes are all original paintings of mine. Um, and I teach you all the elements that I use to create those paintings, but I always hope that people put their own spins to create, you know, an individual piece for themselves. We're getting there.
<laughs> so I'm just going to hang out and wait for a minute. And then when you guys are finished with your background, I want you to type that you are ready. So when you're done, type ready. So I know that we can move on to the next spot. Or if you can't type ready, you know, do some kind of a silly emoji in the comments. That's quick. Right on. And if you are ready and we're still waiting for some other people, give me some entertainment, guys. Tell me where you're from. Tell me, you know, tell me a fun fact about yourself. Yay. Hi, Evelyn. Thanks for painting with me today. Right on. So again, like I said, if you know somebody that would enjoy painting this, I have painting kits and you don't have to paint live. You can um, buy a painting kit from me or go get supplies at the store and then you can watch the replay too. The replays are kind of cool. Some people prefer watching those because they can stop and start and pause and rewind and fast forward through all my, my talking. <laughs> Port Orchard is where it's at, guys. I love Port Orchard. I live in downtown. I hear seals at night. I hear birds during the day. I get to see boats and beautiful sunsets with the Olympic Mountains. And if your black background dripped down over the horse's face, that's okay. Just wipe it off with a paper towel and let it dry and you can come back in and you can adjust the painting when the paint is dry. So the cool thing about acrylic paint is that when the paint is dry to the touch, you can paint over it with other colors. And that means even black. You just have to wait for the paint to be dry. So if it's wet, just take a paper towel and kind of wipe it. And let it dry. And then you can come back in with a clean brush and fix it up. So my background is almost dry. So you can touch it with your finger or you can see, obviously, you see there's parts that are kind of shiny. You can take your clean, dry brush and you can run it over that. And the more times you run over it, obviously, the more times that's going to help the paint dry. It's going to push the paint into the canvas. Um, if your paint is all shiny, that means that it is not dry. If it feels sticky, that means it is not dry. Here's another secret. If you put your hand on the canvas uh, and it feels cold, um, that probably means that it's not quite dry. Also, it means it's almost dry, um, but not quite. So far, so good, though. So what you guys can do while you're waiting for other people to finish the background too, is you can go in and you can outline your horn. So like I said, you can outline your horn in whatever color you want. You can use black, you can use blue, you can use any color. Make sure that whatever color, like if you painted the black around the horn, make sure those areas are dry. Like I said too, if you have a Sharpie marker, you can definitely use a Sharpie to fill that in. Um, or you can just use your, you know, your little paintbrush and you can outline around the edges. So I'm going to outline my horn while I'm waiting for my background to dry and while we're waiting for some other people to join us. So I like to start at the bottom. Okay, that way when I get to the tip, if I need to make that pointy again, I can. So I'm just using black, but if you guys want to use a different color, use a different color. Be creative.
So you want to make sure that you start on one side and then go all the way to the other if you're outlining with the paintbrush. And if you're using, you know, a marker, same thing. If you're scared and you don't want to outline it, you don't have to. But I'm going to for impact. And again, the lower you hold your brush, the more control you're going to have over it. Use your pinky for balance if you need to. And if you need to go over it more than one time, go over it more than one time. And don't forget to breathe. <laughs> Ta-da! So far, so good. All right. So this is where we really get to have some fun. So we wanna make sure that our black background is dry, but then you can start to add in some color to the sky. So if you want to add in some clouds or some space nebulas, if you have a bigger brush, you can use a bigger brush to, you know, to tap. So here I have a bigger brush. You can go in and tap in some clouds with some lighter blues or purples or pink. Or you can take your little brush and you can wipe back and forth at an angle. I'm just going to show you with here. I'll put a little bit of blue. See, I took a little tiny bit of blue here, maybe a little bit of this color. Or you can just mix a light blue with white and blue on your on your brush. You don't need a lot. And you can either wipe like this to create some, some blue in the sky. Or if you prefer a more finished look, you can tap and create some clouds. but obviously the color needs to be a little bit lighter than the black in order for it to show up. So see, you can either wipe like this, but you know how I'm doing everything at an angle here, or you can wipe and you can tap either way to create some, some cloud-like effects in the background here. And you can use lots of colors. So if you want to play and you want to, you know, use pink or purple or you want to use green, um, play with those colors. You don't need a lot of paint to make it happen, but you do want to make sure that your background is dry and you don't need to push really hard. You can just do a nice light brush stroke. See, I'm just wiping my brush back and forth. And then if you want to create clouds, you can tap wherever you want, okay? I like to leave some of the black poking out so I don't fill in all the spaces, but you can definitely, but remember, make sure that the black, so if you just painted your horn, you obviously wouldn't want to paint in there. Let me show you. So if you wanted to create, so if you mix red and blue together, you would get purple. If you want to use a light purple color, you would take red and blue and red, or red and blue with a little bit of white, and that would be like a light purple. So you can change the colors that you mix in there. It doesn't have to all be the same color. 
but you can play and you can add as many colors as you want in the background. Just make sure they're all kind of going in the same direction if you do add them. See, you wouldn't want to make some clouds going up and down and then change it and make them going from right to left. You either want to make them all going at an angle or all going right to left, you know, just to give a little bit of uniformity. But see how fun it is to add in some different colors in there? So to make this purple, I just mixed a little bit of red and blue and white together. See, and I'm just tapping some clouds in there. So you can fill that in or you can just do a few or you can, you know, only add in one. It's up to you. It's your painting. Okay. And so once you have all of your magical little fluffy, fluffy clouds in there, uh, you can start to add some stars. So you can do one of two things. You can go really crazy with it and you can do a splatter effect where you put a little bit of white paint and then you flick it on your canvas. If that makes you nervous though and you want to do a more controlled approach to making stars, you can go back to the handle of your paintbrush like I showed you before when we made the dot of the eye and you can start to just put some little dots like this. So I just took the handle of my paintbrush and I dipped it in some white paint and then I just added some little dots and you can make big ones, you can make little ones, and you can add them all over the place. And if you want to, you know, attempt to do some splatter, splatter painting, you would just take a little bit of white paint on your paintbrush and you dip it into the water bowl once and then you just tap until there's no drips that come off your water and then you can very gently but quickly, see I'm just running my thumb through my paintbrush, and you want to do it in areas that are not near all your, your paint that you just created, like on your body and stuff. You can put your hand to block if you want to, but see how that adds a nice little galaxy space splatter? So you want your thumb or your pointer finger to be go really fast through your brush and you want to make sure that you do it really close to your canvas because if you don't do it close to your canvas then it sprays everywhere and that's not necessarily very fun for some people so <laughs> but I want you guys to have fun so please experiment and play and you know see what works for you and you can always practice on a scrap piece of paper or something first or you know All right, so it's looking pretty spacey. What do you think? <laughs> so once we've got space down, the last step is to add some sparkly stars and then add some hair to this unicorn. So if you have a very small detailed brush, um, you can make these little sparkly stars uh, and if you don't, that's okay. You can always draw them in with like a colored pencil, a white colored pencil, or like a silver marker or something later. But what I do is if you want to create any sort of sparkle, is you would take the handle of your paintbrush and you can make a little dot wherever you want that sparkle to be with paint. And then you take your little detailed round brush and you dip it in paint. So I dip it. And then I roll my paintbrush so that all my bristles stick together, but I don't have a big blob of paint. And then this is what I do. I start from the dot that I created and I gently flick up, gently flick down, and then I can create an X so I can go out, 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 and out. See, so I go up, I go down, I go out to the side, Okay, so, but I'm always starting from the dot and that'll create like a, a fun little shiny, fun little shiny effect. And you can do that once, you can do it, you know, a million times over the background. I'll show you how I look in the original painting here. So see, here's the original. There was a sparkle on the end of the horn 
you can add a few little sparkles everywhere else. So see how my brush strokes are just going at an angle here. And I just used one color there, but see, in this one, you can use as many colors as you want and play and just have a good time. Okay, so once your clouds and your stars are dry, or mostly dry, you can start to add in hair and stuff. And so I like to use multiple colors. You can use just one color if you want, but I suggest to use at least two colors when you paint the hair. That way you have some contrast and you're able to see you know, where, you know, where everything is separated at. Okay. So I want to do some different colors. I think I want to do some, some rainbow hair. So I did just blue and purple and stuff in the first one, but I think I want to add some extra colors here and you really want things to stand out. So I think what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to start with white just to show you guys. So you want to figure out where the bottom of the horn is at to create some bangs for your horse. So look, see, I'm just doing a nice squiggle out in the front. And they don't all have to match. You all start at the same spot, and then they can kind of curl out. So see, I'm just doing a nice little wiggle. And they don't all have to be the same length. And then when I do the hair for the pony going this way, I want to make sure that some of the hair, they start at the back of the ear, and some of them will come down. And then maybe some of the all start at the same spot. Maybe some will come back. And then you can kind of start in between some of the hairs. So see, I'm wiggling and coming down. But I'm always starting from the neck and then coming back. So I don't need to make the hair super crazy and standing up yet. I'll just want to make it kind of tame to start. And then I can continue to add in other stuff. So I start with white, okay, to fill in all that stuff. And they don't all need to be going the same direction. So see how these are all going the same direction? Maybe make one come up at a different direction or come down and cut across, okay? And then take a contrasting color. So you wouldn't want all the hair to be white because it's not gonna show up on the neck. So maybe I would take blue and then I can add a blue hair so and then I can take and add different layers and go in between or cross over some of those other colors and then if you want to get crazy with that you can start you know bringing some of those hairs up and I like to bring them all the way to the edge of the canvas because you want to make it look like that horse has long hair and you want it to all come down all the way down the neck, see, you want to make sure it goes all the way down. So, but you don't want the, too many of the same color hairs all right next to each other because then it's not going to contrast enough. So see, I like to do, give them a little bit of space in between. But you don't want it to make it look like your pony is balding either. So you can always go back to white and then you can fill in some of those extra spaces and have different colors. Okay, you can add some blue up here. You don't wanna cover up too much of your hard work though, so be careful about um, you know, where that hair is contrasting. And then if you wanted to add like some purple or some pink, you would take red and blue to make purple, or if you wanted to add a little bit of um, white to it, that would make it lighter. But see, then you can start to add different colors in there. So if you're going for rainbow hair uh, and you use like the color yellow, make sure that you're waiting for certain things to dry in between. Because if you mix red and yellow and blue all together, all at the same time, that's going to turn brown. And so unicorns can have brown hair too, but if you're going for a rainbow, you want to make sure that some of the layers are dry in between, okay? But see what a difference it makes when you use multiple colors on the hair? That way you can see the separation and it looks like um, it's just flowing everywhere. If you use just one color, it would be harder to differentiate where everything was at. So it's much easier if you're using multiple colors to create 
dimension because then it looks like some of the hairs are in front, some are behind, and then you can come back in with your brush and you can play. But I'm using individual brush strokes. I'm not just filling in a giant mass. I just want to do, you know, one hair at a time. And you can leave little spaces so that some of the black is coming through. But along the neckline, you want to cover up that part of the area so that it looks like the hair is actually growing from there and it doesn't have bald patches. <laughs> But yeah, so I like to keep it mostly behind the ear. Um, you can bring it up higher if, if you feel like that's not high enough. But you don't want it to have an afro, so you want to be aware of, of that. But be playful and let some of your lines wiggle. They don't just have to, um, you know, do one or two curves. You could really... Play with it and you can come back in like I said if there's too much blue in one area you could come in and break it up with a second color or if you felt like your forehead was too big <laughs> you could you know make that hair a little bit longer and come down in the front a little bit But I mean, really, there are so many different ways uh, to play, guys. And, you know, I just want to provide you a few different skills so that you're able to create something that you're happy with and that you have a good time doing and that maybe you can carry on into different parts of your growth into exploring how to create some art. So hopefully uh, I'm able to help you with that. And again, if you did not have enough time or you're still painting, uh, well after we turn off this live video and you have questions or you want some feedback on your painting or ways to make adjustments, I am here and you can just message me and we can talk, we can chat, we can figure stuff out. Um, yeah, because I want you guys to have a, a product that you're happy with. I want you to have a good time during this and I also want you to give yourself enough time to create something that makes you happy. So again, too, or if you went a little crazy with the hair here, too, you can also wait for the paint to dry and you can come back in and you can crisp up details. So uh, like if you accidentally bumped and got it into a place on the face that you didn't want, like I said, you just wait for the paint to dry. And so see how this is black up here? If I, It's dry now, though, so if I wanted to clean this up, I can come back in and I can... You know, I can cut into that paint as long as it's dry and um, and create a second layer there. But that's how I created my my spacey magical magical unicorn with a little sparkle, guys. So this one's a little bit different even than the original. So if you want to intensify your outlines, you can come back in with some black. Um, I just did it. See, I outlined the horn. I outlined the eye. So you can do the mouth or under the chin if you want, but you know, just the blue is usually good enough. Uh, but you know, that's up to you on how you want to interpret that. So I'm back. Here we are. So I just want to thank you guys again for tuning in. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun doing these classes and we appreciate all of your support during this time. If you felt like this class brought you value and you want to make a contribution, I have posted a PayPal link in the event uh, or on the post title. Um, that's not necessary though. I want these classes to be available for everybody, um, you know, despite whatever financial situation you may be in. But if you're interested in doing a lot of painting classes and not just the one, you can also check out my Patreon link. Or if you want to support, you can also purchase a Rembrandt Illustration Spread Art Not Germs t-shirt through Bremerton Built. Uh, and that link is also on my page. I'll also share that in the event. And then the next time I see you guys, we're going to be doing a later evening paint night on Saturday. We're going to be painting sugar skulls. So if you have canvas, you can paint this on canvas. But if you want to do a 3D painting, I also have some skulls that are, you know, they're big. And you can really have fun with these because you can put rhinestones on them. You can, you know, glue flowers on them later. You can, you know, cut open the top and turn them into planters or hangers for your deck. And anyway, 
I'm having so much fun uh, interacting with you guys. I'm so happy that the feed didn't cut out this time and that we were able to work together in the space. And like I said, if you guys have any questions about uh, our painting events or you want to um, give a suggestion for something you'd like to learn about or something you'd like to paint. I'm always open to suggestions. I have a group on uh, Facebook too called Rembert Illustration Paint Nights with Rembert Illustration. Uh, you can definitely give input in that group or to follow my original art you can go to Instagram and find me on Inst Instagram under Rembert Illustration and keep uh, tuned in because we're going to be doing some art auctions and give you guys some opportunities to get some freebies or some really cheap art and and I just want to see you guys keep creating and hopefully through this we can all get through difficult times together and show each other positivity and support. And I just appreciate you guys. So thank you so much and I will see you again soon. So here's the painting one more time before we go. We painted magical unicorns and peace out. Have a good night guys.